Good afternoon, everyone. We are the Group 1, and in today's presentation, we would like to tackle all about infectious diseases in the context of sexually transmitted diseases. So what are STIs? STIs are sexually transmitted infections or sexually transmitted diseases that are acquired through sexual contact. However, it is important to take note that in some cases, such as in pregnant individuals, bodily fluids are transferred from mothers to its infants. Consequently, according to the World Health Organization, an estimation of 374 million new infections have been recorded for the past year. Hence, it is of public health concern and public health burden in terms of the morbidity and mortality over the years. Moving on to the results in discussion, in this stage, we will be tackling several sexually transmitted infections such as herpes simplex virus infection, gonorrhea, syphilis, chlamydia, and trichomoniasis. We will be digging information regarding the nature of disease, clinical symptoms, etiology, diagnosis, prevention, as well as the treatment. And now let us proceed to the first type of infectious disease known as herpes simplex virus infection. So herpes simplex virus is two different strains wherein first HSV type 1 can be transmitted through oral contact and can be visible in or around the mouth. This is also known as oral herpes, while the other one HSV type 2 can be transmitted through sexual encounters and also known as genital herpes. In the recent estimation in 2016, 67% or over 3.7 billion people aging 50 and below have acquired H HSV type 1 infection globally, wherein it is more prevalent in the childhood stage. On the other hand, 13% or over 491 million people have contracted HSV type 2 uh, globally within the same age range. And women are said to be more prone to this type of infection or disease, and new infections in the current era tend to be highest among the adolescents. And in terms of the clinical symptoms, so both oral and genital herpes can appear to be asymptomatic or there will be no symptoms perceived in the infected individual. But in case uh, symptoms are present, we can distinguish all our her oral herpes and genital herpes through the manifestation of their symptoms. So for oral herpes, uh, there is a presence of painful blisters um, inside the mouth known as ulcers or around the mouth known as the cold sores. So prior to the emergence of this um, ulcers and blisters, the, there will be um feeling of burning, itching, and tingling sensation. So um, sample picture is shown in the left side, in the upper left side. And in terms of genital herpes, there will be the appearance of genital or anal blisters or ulcers which can happen singly or in many numbers. So aside from this, um, individual infected with um, genital herpes can experience fever, body aches, as well as swollen lymph nodes. So, um, attached images appears um, ma male and female genitalia with um, ulcers or blisters. So, so, it is also known that HSV2 have more recurrent symptoms than those of the HSV1. But this recurrent symptoms is milder than the first onset of symptoms and can happen periodically depending on the individual infected with the virus. HPV is primarily caused by the reactivation of the varicella zoster virus that causes chickenpox. Varicella zoster virus is considered to be non-infectious on its latent form but are able to reactivate at a later time to transform into intact variants that are involved in sensory neurons. So the viremic phase of the varicella zoster virus is heavily associated with the epidermal cells that usually causes the distinct varicella rash. These reactivated variants then travel to the skin through the axon spreading cell to cell which later penetrates to the epidermis. The incubation period for VSV is usually 14 to 16 days and is considered to be infectious up to 10 to 21 days right after the initial exposure. 
For the diagnosis, it was mentioned by the CDC or the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention that the symptoms for HPV are distinctive enough in order to make a clinical diagnosis through the skin rashes exhibited by the patients. However, diagnosis cannot be made unless there is a presence of a skin rash and therefore, several laboratory tests are recommended in order to obtain a more accurate diagnosis for, um, for asymptomatic and symptomatic patients. It was mentioned that the polymerase chain reaction test is considered to be the most useful diagnostic method in determining the presence of VSV among HPV patients. For the prevention and treatment, on the other hand, there is still no direct treatment for HPV, but there are several treatments and medications used to manage the symptoms. These include several antiviral drug therapy such as acyclovir, valacyclovir, and famiciclovir. These antiviral drugs um, shortens the length and severity of the STD. Moreover, wet compresses, lotions, topical creams, and oatmeal baths may also help relieve itch um, as a symptom of HPV. The next sexual transmitted disease that we're going to talk all about is chlamydia. So for the nature of the disease of chlamydia, chlamydia is a type of sexual transmitted disease that is commonly caused by a bacteria. So this type of disease infects both male and female individuals. Um, chlamydia has three main species, which is known as trachomatis, pneumoniae, and as well as chlamydia psittaci. So chlamydia is commonly found in countries such as United Kingdom, Australia, and as well as United States of America. It's important to know that the common symptom of chlamydia is urethritis, which is the infection of the urethra. Well, according to the statistics of World Health Organization, there are 129 million cases of chlamydia around the world last 2020. So for the etiology of chlamydia, this type of sexual transmitted disease can be transmitted through five different sexual activities such as sexual intercourse, anal sex, oral sex, usage of sex toys, and as well as manual simulation of genitals or anus. So in order to further explain how this um, different sexual activities transmits chlamydia, so for the sexual intercourse, um, the transmission of um, the media happens when a bacteria passes from one person's penis to their partner's vagina or vice versa. So it is a little bit similar with anal sex, but the only difference is that bacteria passes from one person's penis to a person's anus or vice versa. So next we have oral sex, uh, wherein the bacteria passes from one person's mouth to their partner's penis, vagina, or anus, or vice versa. So the usage of sex toys is also um, used in order to transmit chlamydia. And it happens when a toy uh, which obtains a bacteria of chlamydia creates a physical contact with a person's mouth, penis, vagina, or anus. So lastly, we have manual simulation of genitals or anus, which is less common, and it happens when an infected vaginal fluid or semen comes in contact with a person's eye and causes an infection, which is known as conjunctivitis. So for the clinical symptoms of chlamydia in male individuals, or male individuals experiences painful urination, white urethral discharge from penis, testicular pain due to the inflammation of testis, which is also known as the epididymo orchitis. And lastly, we have urethritis, which is the inflammation of the urethra. So now we're going to talk about the clinical symptoms of chlamydia that is being experienced by female individuals. So for female individuals, um, they experience more um, symptoms than the male individuals who are experiencing or obtains um, chlamydia. So female, um, they experience deep dyspareunia, which is also known as the painful intercourse, and as well as dysuria, which is also known as the painful urination. They also experience abdominal vaginal discharge, and as well as abnormal bleedings between periods and after sexual activity. 
And lastly, they also experience lower abdominal pain. Clamidia trachomatis can be diagnosed through nucleic acid amplification tests. The most sensitive assays which have a specificity similar to cell culture and are the method of choice for CT detection. Furthermore, because NAATs do not require infectious bacteria, they can be done on a variety of clinical specimens that do not require special transport or storage condition. First, void urine and vaginal swabs are the recommended specimens for evaluating males and females with lower genital tract infections. NAAT analysis of comparable mucosal swabs should also be used to check for infections of anorectal, oropharyngeal, and ocular epithelia. According to studies, both azithromycin and doxycycline are equally effective in treating uncomplicated genitourinary chlamydia infection. Although dual therapy for gonorrhea and chlamydia is recommended when patients are diagnosed with gonorrhea, expedited partner therapy may improve clinical and behavioral outcomes in heterosexual men and women with chlamydia infection. In order to prevent spreading the infection to partners, people with chlamydia should refrain from sexual activity for seven days after receiving a single dosage of antibiotics or until the end of seven-day course of antibiotics. It is critical to take all of the chlamydia treatment as directed. Partners should be referred for evaluation, testing, and treatment if they had sexual contact within 60 days of the diagnosis or of the onset of symptoms. Gonorrhea is a sexually transmitted infection that is mainly caused by the bacterium Neisseria gonorrhea. It is the second most common sexually transmitted infections in North America following chlamydia. Gonorrhea predominantly affects the urogenital tract and rectum as well as other sites including but not limited to pharynx, conjunctiva, and endocervix. Generally, it has a worldwide distribution and it is found to be common in both men and women, which are usually asymptomatic. As a matter of fact, the World Health Organization revealed that there were 87 million cases that has occurred in year 2018 alone. In terms of infectivity rate, men are found to have 20-30% to 30 chance of infection, whereas it is higher in women or females. As I've mentioned earlier, gonorrhea is caused by the bacterium Neisseria gonorrhea. It is acquired through direct sexual contact with an infected person. Ejaculation is actually not necessary for one to acquire or transmit gonorrhea. It can also be caused by unsafe sex, multiple sexual partners, being a sex worker or spread perinatally from mother to her child during childbirth. The risk factors associated with gonorrhea include previous gonorrhea infection and STIs or human immunodeficiency virus or HIV. Lack of education, minority ethnic group, and low socioeconomic status are some of the factors associated with the geographical clustering of gonococcal infections. As for the clinical symptoms in terms of morphological, in females, gonorrhea is most often asymptomatic, while in men, it is symptomatic. Clinical manifestation in symptomatic females include vaginal discharge, abnormal uterine bleeding, dysuria, rectal pain, lower abdominal pain, and dyspareunia. Conversely, symptomatic males experience urethral discharge, itch, rectal pain, dysuria, testicular pain, and cutaneous gonococcal lesion. So generally, gonorrhea is a mucosal infection with pustular discharge that is not complicated. The infection starts when the gonococci adhere to the cell of the epithelium using its pili and is followed by cellular um, invasion. This invasion happens at the anatomic sites of the inoculation such as cervix, urethra, anus, or pharynx in adults, and eye conjunctiva or pharynx in newborns. This now produces acute separation in which could lead to tissue invasion and is followed by chronic inflammation and fibrosis. There are two classifications of gonococci based on their sensitivity to killing um, complement invasion, namely the serum-resistant and serum-sensitive. So um, the strain that could potentially cause the infection to disseminate are referred to as serum-resistant strains. In order to fight off their host organisms, um, innate and adaptive uh, immunity systems for immune defenses and gonorrhea has evolved to several mechanisms. Most often than not, 
um, the bacterium and gonorrhea can infiltrate as infection to the bloodstream. Gonorrhea can be detected or diagnosed using various diagnostic methods. The first one is through smears in which gram-stained smears of either urethral or endocervical specimen can reveal the presence of diplococci bacterium. The second one is through culture in which the pus or mucus specimen can be streaked on an enriched selective medium such as Thayer Martin medium or MPM incubated at 5% um, carbon dioxide at 37 degrees Celsius. The disease can be confirmed after 48 hours through the presence of the pathogen in the gram stain smear and positive oxidase test. The third one or the last one is through nucleic acid amplification test or NAT. Tests of this um, sophistication has high specificity and sensitivity to accurately detect N. gonorrhea isolated from genitourinary specimen. Since gonorrhea is a disease that is primarily transmitted through sexual contact, one can minimize the risk of infection by reducing the number of sexual partners and getting tested. One can also um, opt to minimize exposure either by mechanical prophylaxis such as condoms or through chemoprophylaxis which both offers partial protection. As for the treatment, gonorrhea can be cured with antibiotics. 95% of the infection should be cured for a treatment to be considered as an ideal for gonorrhea. The new recommended regimen by the CDC includes 500 mg of ceftriaxone administered intramuscularly or oral administration of cetic signs. Furthermore, the first line of therapy for gonorrhea also includes cephalosporin. Next, we have an infectious systemic disease, which is called syphilis, and this is also acquired through sexual contact. For a brief introduction or description about syphilis, this type of STD has been known to produce a wide variety of symptoms and complex manifestations that can develop in stages known as primary, secondary, latent, and tertiary. As it starts as a painless sore, which is typically on the genitals, rectum, or mouth, it also spreads from person to person via skin or mucous membrane contact with this one. These pathogens usually enter the body through the tissues that line the rectum, vagina, or nose. If not treated quickly, it could get worse over time and cause other medical issues. According to Kojima et al. 2014, syphilis remains to cause morbidity and mortality all over the world. This is due to the fact that many people get left untreated and without treatment, syphilis can severely damage your heart, brain, or other organs, and it can be life-threatening. When it comes to its etiology, so it is caused by the Esperocytal bacterium Treponema pallidum. So given that there is no animal reservoir that is available, humans are the only host that this kind of bacteria use as per Kojima et al. So this infectious disease is transmitted through vaginal, anogenital, and orogenital contact as I have mentioned a while ago. The syphilitic lesions on the genitals occur due to sexual transmissions. The first sign of syphilis in the primary stage is the presence of a tiny sore known as the chancre. The sore develops in parts of the body where the bacteria entered. And majority of the people that are infected with syphilis get only one chancre but some develop numerous. The second stage of syphilis symptoms include rashes in the skin, or mucous membrane lesions. This stage is often marked by the appearance of a rash on one or more parts of the body. The rashes do not generally cause itching and it is rough, red, or reddish-brown patches on the palms and soles. Rashes that have a different look may appear on other places of the body and could sometimes mimic rashes of other conditions. The latent stage of syphilis is characterized by the absence of obvious indications of the disease. However, even with no visible symptoms of the disease, syphilis will persist in the body if it is left untreated. Lastly is the tertiary syphilis. It could appear 10 to 30 years after an individual contracts the virus and it is potentially lethal. It could damage variety of organs including the brain, nerves, eyes, hearts, and blood vessels. Syphilis can be diagnosed through treponemal testing as it detects antibodies specific for syphilis. Treponemal antibodies show first followed by non-treponemal antibodies. 
blood tests could establish the presence of antibodies produced by the body to, to attack the infection. Since the antibodies remain in the body for several years, this test could be utilized to identify whether you are currently infected or have been infected in the past. A sample of cerebrospinal fluid by lumbar puncture is recommended if there are syphilis-related nervous system complications. For the prevention of syphilis, since there is no available vaccine to prevent syphilis, to prevent acquisition and spread, it is suggested to abstain from sex and be monogamous. Additionally, practicing safe sex through usage of condom could help in reducing the risk of acquiring syphilis. However, this is only applicable if the syphilis sores are covered. In terms of treatment, benzathine penicillin G can help in treating syphilis in early stages. This helps in avoiding further damage and complications by having three doses within weekly intervals. Trichomoniasis is a very common sexually transmitted disease that is caused by the protozoan parasite called Trichomonas vaginalis. This protozoan is a motile type of organism that lives generally in the lower genital urinary tract of females and lower part of urethra and prostate in males. In some cases, men that acquire this infection are usually asymptomatic. One study provided an estimation of infection rate from trichomoniasis resulting with 3.2%. The infection rate of trichomonas vaginalis in the United States are significantly higher compared to other SCIs such as the Neisseria gonorrhea and Chlamydia trachomatis. This disease is relatively prevalent in women with age groups of 40 to 49 years old. Most individuals acquire trichomoniasis from the infected person to an uninfected one during sexual intercourse. The parasite usually inhabits for several hours in moist conditions. However, the most common contraction of this infection is through direct sexual contact. Women get mostly infected on the lower genital tract containing the urethra, cervix, vagina, or vulva while in men is through their urethra. During sexual activity, the parasite normally passes from the penis to vagina or vice versa. Those infected individuals that are asymptomatic are still capable of spreading the infection to others. The Trichomonas vaginalis has an incubation period of 5 to 28 days in women. The symptoms that most women experience are the feeling of discomfort during urination, the changes in vaginal discharge that varies from an increased volume of discharge or thin amounts of discharge that can be in yellowish, greenish, white, and clear color with a foul smell. The UTI symptoms can also be experienced, vaginal itching, painful intercourse, and pelvic pain. Their genital area appears to be edematous and in red color. While most men that acquire this infection are asymptomatic as mentioned from the previous slides, they also experience symptoms of having discharge, feeling of discomfort, or burning after urination or ejaculation, itching inside penis, cloudy color of urine, and dysuria. So, when it comes to the diagnosis of trichomoniasis, symptoms perpetuated by trichomonas vaginalis overlap significantly with other sexually transmitted pathogens. That is why a diagnosis anchored solely on clinical presentation is rarely possible. Diagnosis of trichomoniasis can be administered through looking at vaginal fluid in terms of women and urine with regards to men wherein the presence of the motile protozoa through its jerky movements is usually observed. If the parasite of concern Trichomonas vaginalis is visible under the microscope, no further diagnostic test is needed. So as you can observe on the right side of your screen is a relative figure of Trichomonas vaginalis from a vaginal discharge that is seen under a microscope. So in cases wherein microscopy is not conclusive enough, the use of nucleic acid amplification along with rapid antigen testing is usually administered. So nucleic acid amplification testing is considered as the gold standard for detection of trichomoniasis, 
wherein the genetic material of the parasite in a sample of urine or fluid from vagina is detected. So rapid antigen testing is a quick method of detection through the use of antigen in the vaginal fluid. However, in some cases, culture methods is also used for an accurate detection of trichomoniasis. With regards to the prevention and treatment, metronidazole and tinidazole is the drug of choice for trichomoniasis. However, it is important to take note that after the administration of the drugs, avoidance of consuming alcohol is important. Considering metronidazole produce, produces a disulfiram reaction with alcohol, thus perpetuating an adverse effects on its patients.